Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo County Corso. So, it's almost, I know big guy, it's almost sundown and I'm doing the thing where I let my hens out to do some free ranging and I've decided to bring Tillicum today by himself in hopes that maybe we get a different result because um, I will agree with some viewers that um, I could have been setting him up for failure initially and I don't want to do that um, and uh, and I'm not you know I am by no means a livestock guardian trainer I'm not, I don't pretend to be so I am learning um, about this myself and so we're just gonna try we're just gonna try this so let's see what happens so um you're a good boy you're a good fluffy boy you're a good fluffy boy he's a fluffy man he's a fl no he's a fluffy man he's a fluffy man he's a fluffy boy all right so quit floof tell him quit quit um i'm using my hand to block He's just licking my hand. He's like, "Oh, that smells nice." Yeah, I had some. I had some some of Savannah's pie. She had. She made a um, strawberry pie, which strawberry cream pie, which I'd never had before. And it's uh, very interesting. It's it's kind of a a different take. Sorry, a different take on a on a um ah, on a cheesecake on a strawberry cheesecake. So. So let's see what happens. So he's looking at the chickens. Let's see what he does. Tillicum? No. Good boy. That's a good boy. Psh, don't jump on me. But you see how his initial drive wants to chase after them? Now he's three months old. Working on four months, quit working on four months old. So I will give him that. That you know, could he mature out of it? Absolutely. You know what I mean? He's very much a baby right now. And, you know, he could. Um But uh no uh, to look him. Stay. Good boy. So he's looking at them. He really he wants to so bad. He really does want to so bad. Hello. Kubonia. Kubalicious. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, there's his human. I'm working on him again just to see if maybe not having the rest of them here. Uh, there was spe speculation that maybe he was only doing it because the other dogs were out here and maybe because we were letting them play rough, but I think we just saw that that's not true because he, he went to try to chase after them again just now. He did listen better this time. Whenever I told him stop, he stopped immediately. So I do like that, but he, um, but he did want to chase. So I don't think that it was that. I think that it is in his nature to want to chase right now. Um, and I can see it in his eyes. He keeps looking at them. He really looks, see, see, look at that. See that head down? That, that's a, that's a predatory stance. See? Psh, that, Tilly. So he, he really does want to chase them. I mean, that's just that low head, um, the prowl that he was doing. That's, that's just predatory. That's exactly what, what, you know, canines do, uh, whenever they are, um, whenever they're hunting. I don't think he wants to kill them though. I think he just, or do you think he wants to? I thought he just mm, It's hard to know. Cause at three months old, he's, he's still very much a baby. So the fact that he didn't kill that one chicken may not be because he didn't want to. It may have been that he just didn't know how. And so it's hard to know exactly how intense that drive is. But what I do know is that he shouldn't have that drive at all if he's going to be able to be a livestock guardian. Um, you see how he's looking? I want you to see this. So as they, he's with her, but he's constantly looking at them. He really, really wants to chase those chickens. Can you please get that dog quickly? Thank you. Um, and so anyway, so yeah, he, he definitely wants to go at Tilly. Come here, boy. 
Tilly, come. Good boy. Come here, baby. Good baby. Tilly. Good baby. Yes, you're a good boy. Um, so, yeah, he wants to see that, see that looking at him. He really wants to. He's not because I'm telling him not to. And that's good. I mean, at least he's being obedient. That's, that's nice. And that's definitely an improvement from yesterday. Tell him, ah, ah, ah. Get your butt over here. Good boy. Come in. Tilly. <whistles> Tell him. Psst. See, I'm not really his person. Psst. Ah. Tell him. And he knows that his person is here. And so he wants to go with her. Kubo, you ready? Want to come inside? You want to come in, Kubo? Over here. Kubo, Kubo, Psh, get back. Kubo, come on. Good boy. There you go. Now, Kubo was a total jerk today, and he and Ibiza um, tried to kill this uh, rooster that I really don't like today. He's a he's a, a barred rock, or not barred rock. He's the Rhode Island Red. And the reason I don't like him is because he takes advantage of these younger, I have these two younger roosters they are partridge brahmas and one of them is one of those small ones he's like i don't know that he's considered bantam but bantam or whatever they're called but he he is a constantly mis i don't even think he's mistaken for a hen because like i said we all saw it yesterday when one of the roosters went after the hen the other roosters came in and defended her and were kind of like setting a perimeter but when it came to that other rooster all of the roosters were standing there taking turns so if they thought he was a hen wouldn't they try to also protect him wouldn't they also try to step in no they are literally taking advantage of of him and it's I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of disturbing. <laughs> so that red rooster specifically will jump into, he'll fly into. Normally I keep that guy up, and in fact he is put away right now. In, th in fact, I think that this is their, this is their pen right here. And so, no, it's not this one actually. I take it back. It's this one, um, right here. Oh, that barred rock is in there. That's not good. So that barred rock rooster is in there. Oh yeah, he probably has been messing with them. So you see there's a, um, this is what they do, man. They come in here and they mess with this poor dude, man. It sucks. But I don't know if you can see, you see there's like a, dang, you can't see it because this dang camera. You see if I can, come on now. Um, okay, okay. So you see back there, there's a rooster in the corner. There's the barred rock and there's a rooster in the corner with his head in the back. That barred rock has probably been taken, taken advantage. Uh, and I even clipped his wings. I actually clipped that barred rock's wings to try to keep him from coming in here. And he's able to do it anyway. So, anyway, um, it just sucks because they're jerks. But, you know, it's nature and it is what it is. Um, and there's really not much that I can, you know, I've done what I can. I keep him locked up and I try to keep him safe. But, unfortunately, these other roosters are going to do their thing and um but that red one in particular I um he just he's just relentless for a long time he would he would run in in the most aggressive fashion and just like grab him and just like it it was disturbing you know what I'm saying like don't nobody want to see that you know what I mean like <laughs> it's wrong man so uh I wasn't too unhappy that it was him, but I did save him because I don't want my dogs thinking that they can kill chickens. So they didn't kill him, but they tried to. And luckily I caught it in a time that you can't, he can't, you can't even tell that he was messed up. You know what I mean? Like his feathers are, are pristine. Um, so anyway, so, you know, on that, on that thing, like he's fine, but, but it, it couldn't happen to a better rooster. That's for sure. <laughs> so. He don't protect nothing either. He don't be doing nothing other than trying to take advantage. Like that's all he does in his life is just try to take advantage every every chance he gets. Tilly, where are you going? Tilly come. Oh, he's gonna poop. He's a pooping man. He's a pooping man. See, that's the kind of good owner I am. Who do you know that sings to their dog when they poop? Bet you don't know nobody. That's right. That's the kind of quality that we're offering over here on Senza Tempo Connie Corso Farm. You get, we sing to our dogs as they poop. <clears throat> so anyway, you know, I wanted to see if there was a difference. 
I, you know, a lot of people were suggesting that, so I figured that I would give it a shot. Um, I had some people that were kind of, like, criticizing me for, like, like raising him with the Corso or whatever. But as I said before, there's, there's really nothing I can do about that. He couldn't have been out here on his own anyway. It's not safe. He would have been, he would have been dead. So he had to be raised with us and there's just no way around it and I'm not gonna lie like do I want him to be able to do his job and this and that yes however last night me was really going off um Kubo you you can get in some serious serious trouble don't you look at my chickens like that don't sir he knows he missed up Tilly! Oh, that's a hen. See, you see how the other rooster came in? That other rooster came in to try to save her? Ah! See how Tillicum just tried to get involved again? See that drive? Tillicum! And don't think for a second he's just trying to save that hen because he, he don't know nothing about that. Um, see, he's going for the hen. See what I mean? Tillicum! No! You see how hard he has to fight that drive? He wants to so bad. Like, that's just instinct. That's that's just instinct. He just doesn't have what it takes. I'm just going to be honest with you. But you know what, though? That's fine. He can be my pet. And I'll train him just like I'll train my corsos not to eat them birds when I'm out here. And he just won't be left alone. But I'll tell you what. He has more drive for them chickens than even my corsos do, which is interesting. Um, I've had a couple corsos that had that problem. Hefe probably was one. He He was... Um, pretty drivey, um, so, but yeah, this dude right here, he's, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised if I'm being honest. Um, see how he looks over, he looks, he wants to get away, see, he wants to get away, and then he looks, Tilly, psst, quit, see, and then it makes him uncomfortable, he can't control the drive, it makes him uncomfortable, and he wants to get away. See, now he's like, okay, I'm gonna play with this toy. So that's good. He figured out something else to do with himself. He looking at him, walks away. Good boy. I like to see that. That's good. So he had to learn how to manage his own drive just then. And he's a baby. He's only three months old. So he might be four months old now. Because um, I think Kubo turned four months old. No, no, he... Wait a minute, hold on. Actually, I take that back. He... He should be five months old. I don't know why I'm saying he's three months old. He should be five months old because he's older than than them, for sure. He's older than them. Um, I think he, they were, what, two weeks old when I got him. Um, so he should be, like, three weeks older. Maybe, maybe three to four five weeks older I'd have to look at the dates but anywhere between three and five weeks older than um than Kubo so he's actually five months old for sure so I don't know why I was saying three months old but anyway <clears throat> but yeah he's a baby and he's learning how to manage his own drive how to manage himself and that's what you just saw there he was very uncomfortable he wanted to get away he couldn't get away and then his drive was telling him to go get the chicken and he was really struggling with not really knowing how to handle himself just then and then it clicked in and boom i'm gonna grab a toy and i'm gonna go play with this toy and that's what he did and now look at him he's doing good he used the other part of his brain he thought his way out of it and i'm impressed you know i'm impressed it's good that's very nice mm. funny boy but like I said he's a pet y'all I mean he's he's a he's our big floofy boy um he don't need to be you know and this is this is what I'll tell you is like I said as much as it's like a part of me was like mm, you know it'd be cool to have a livestock guardian dog I was really thinking about it last night because um uh Tillicum was actually really loud last night he was so loud that I actually brought him inside and it dawned on me that it wouldn't really be very fair to my neighbors to have this loud... Like it wouldn't do much to repair my relationship with them. To have this loud guardian dog that is going to bark constantly at every sound in the night. And their house is like right by my barn. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I doubt that he would bark enough to, 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 to be able to file a legitimate noise complaint. But I do think that... 
it would be annoying. And I know that I didn't like even listening to the amount of barking he was doing last night and it wasn't that bad. So, you know, um, once I apply for my permit, if I get my permit, I think, um, somebody else had mentioned getting like a donkey and, um, I had actually, where are you going? I had actually been looking into getting some type of equine and I think that I may do something like that. I, um, I struggle with like the fear of riding a horse because I'm not getting any younger and I'm, I do all this on my own and I can't really afford to be injured. Um, actually I'm not going to say I do all this on my own. Savannah is now of an age where she helps me a lot and I don't want to take that away from her. I'm very appreciative of her help and I do want to say that. Um, but having said that, it, it is still very much, um, there's a lot on my shoulders and, and I'm really not in a position to be able to be uh, out of commission for a while. And, but I also struggle with, you know, I've always wanted a horse and like, are you just going to let fear take away the potential for joy? I've ridden horses a couple times and not been thrown off. And I wonder if... A lot of people, they get thrown off. Like, I think that, I mean, any anybody, any horse can throw you. And I know that. Okay, I've, I've, I've done enough research to know that. But what I will say is I think that you can gracefully re greatly reduce the chances of that by choosing a horse with a very specific temperament and age and gender. So, like, a old, not old, but, you know, like, um, uh, you know, a, a, a horse with some age on him, Any, anything probably between like 10 and 15 years old, maybe like a gelding and, um, maybe something that has like less drive, maybe a draft cross or something like that. So anyway, um, I struggle with, with that whole thing. Whoa, 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 watch out bro. And of wanting to do that, of, of wanting to have a horse, wanting to have that experience. Um, and I think even if I decided not to, even if I decided that, you know what, I'm not going to ride, I do think that I would like to have a couple horses that maybe like need a home, like retired horses, something like that. Um, so, um, so anyway, so we'll see. I, um, you know, and I could, like I said, I could get maybe a donkey to help, um, with keeping things more secure back here anyway. So regardless of whatever he turns into or whatever he's gonna stay here we bought him as a pet knowing that that there are never any gear even and I say this all the time with people that talk about you know working lines and this and that and it's like just because you buy a dog from working lines does not mean that that animal is going to be able to do that work and um you know, I used to breed pit bulls, and it was well known that even in some of the most famous game dog lines, you would have um, you would have dogs that just you know wouldn't do it. So, um, um, this dude is really funny. So, like I said, uh, and I had some other people that were like, "Well, why didn't you buy from?" You know, uh, with him, some people were commenting, "Why didn't you buy from Proven Lines and these?" Newfoundlands are not known for doing this, blah, blah, blah. And the reality of that situation is that I purchased him from a person who was already using the parents as livestock guardians. So, um, so I had every reason to, you know, I followed all of the technical rules, you know what I mean? Of making sure that you buy from proven parents and this and that, um, and the only thing I will say is that apparently his mother, which is the Landseer, Newfoundland, did chase chickens when she was younger. And I think she may have even killed a chicken when she was younger. And eventually she did grow out of it. And through a lot of the research that I've done into these dogs, even um, livestock guardians in general, they can grow out of that. Uh, I think that obviously you don't want to let it go unchecked. You do want to um, redirect that and manage them and this and that. But I, it, I think it is, it, it is possible. So, you know, either way, whatever it ends up being, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Either way, um, I'm just happy to have the floof. I think he's a gorgeous dog. He's a, he's a wonderful dog. He's got a fantastic temperament. It's an, it's honestly like if I lived in an area that was um, colder. Or I would say like milder in the summer, then I may um, have even like started like a Newfoundland um, program as well because they're really wonderful dogs. They're 
they're just tough enough, which is what I like. Um, and I've, I've he- now obviously he's a mix, so I can't judge everything based upon him. But um, but I did a lot of research, and from what I had read, they're not as independent as the Great Pyrenees, um, and they're and they're they're a tough dog, and I like that. I like a tougher dog, and what I like too is that even though he is tough, he's not as tough as the Corso. Um, he's tough in like his ability to put up with situations and he's not like this, you know, bag of fear, but on the flip side, like you see how he stands up to, um, for himself, but on the flip side, if I get onto him or whatever, he, he doesn't, he's not a hard dog to train. You know what I mean? You don't need to be an expert in dog training to be able to manage, um, this dog versus like Corso can be very, very, um, they can be very difficult. What's your little angry face? Yep. Anyway, well, I'm going to let y'all go. Sun's going down. Sure is beautiful, you guys. It's a beautiful day. It Actually, it was horrible. I'm not going to lie. It, was, it rained. And it was cloudy and nasty and dreary. And now the sun came out. And when the sun comes out, when it goes down, it actually shines the sun right into my living room. So I get like the sun down sun, but not the, not the morning sun. I, I really love morning sun. It helps to get the day going, but, but anyway, it's still very beautiful. I love, um, I love it out here. So, um, so anyway, but hopefully, hopefully everything works out with the permit and, and we get to do a lot of that stuff. Cause I sure would love to be able to come out here and have a couple horses and, um, you know, it just make, it would just, that would like complete I think everyone, when you're growing up, everybody has like dreams, right? Like things that they, that they want. And one of the things that I always wanted that I haven't had yet is a horse. Um, that's the one thing I just, I was never in a position and, and I just, that was the one thing I always wanted and I've not, I had not had it and I'm now in a position to have it. And so we'll see, we'll see. So whether or not I decide to take up all of the learning of riding and buying all the tack and all that stuff and whatnot, or whether or not I just get some, yeah, I th- part of me feels like I would really get more out of a horse by just, like, I love to watch animals. Um, I love to watch their interactions and I like to figure out how they communicate with one another. I find it to be very interesting and because every every animal has a language um they have it's usually a mix of body language and behavior and then certain sounds or like the intensity of certain sounds or the frequency of the sounds there's all these different variations of of communication and so i like to watch them and figure it out and i find it to be extremely interesting and so i feel like one of the things that i would really like would just be to watch them and just kind of see how they are, and it's it's funny. It's so funny because Reese and I we went and saw that new Avatar movie together, and she goes, "I hope you know that you're that weird girl, that girl that's always staring at the, at the, all the fish and stuff, and like and like has no dad, and like and everyone like stares at her." And I was like, I was like, I was like, you know what? I knew it. I was watching it, and I knew it. I was like, there I am. There's there's my there, there's my person. There's the weird girl who's spending way too much time staring at animals again. <laughs> like, it's totally me. And I knew it. I knew it. I begrudgingly knew it. But it is what it is. So, uh, but yeah, that's totally me. So anyway, I, uh, I hope y'all have a good day. And I hope you enjoyed this little video where I show you that Silicum is just is who he is. And we'll keep working with him. No judgment here. But I don't think it had anything to do with the other dogs. I think he just has a natural prey drive that isn't necessarily um, going to be help, helpful in a job working with livestock. So anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.